Good afternoon, everybody. Today is Monday, January the 14th, 2013. I'm Tim Bartos. This is my guest, Dan Heim, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Dan in just a minute. Thank you for joining us. This is a web chat, and uh, we are in the web room at Channel 6, WRGB, and their studios on Balltown Road. And uh, I'm the host of Six on Seniors, which is seen right here each and every Monday during the noon news with Liz Bishop. And we talk about all kinds of things that relate to seniors, caregivers, and as I like to say, everyone else in between, and everything else in between too, Dan. <laughs> so, There's a lot of people in anyway, between. That's right, a lot of people in between. But uh, today, in fact, I guess today was, was especially timely because uh, when I walked in, I realized the president was, um, was on, and uh, he was live from the White House talking about uh, uh, this, this, the uh, state of finances in this country, mm -hmm. and uh, I really can't comment because I didn't get a chance to hear that uh, uh, conference, but uh, he was talking about it. And today I talked about the fiscal cliff and, you know, what the fiscal cliff, the implications are for seniors, and there's going to be a lot more debate in the, in the coming weeks about this, and uh, there are going to be all kinds of proposals, I'm sure, that are going to be floated. And uh, we'll see what the final outcome is. We will but, uh, At any rate, we're here to talk about the fiscal cliff and uh, future impl implications of uh, you know what's really what's going on in this country right now and what, what what we can expect. So, as I said a minute ago, my guest today is Dan Heim, and Dan is the vice president of Leading Age. And uh, I'm going to let you t tell folks a little bit about what Leading Age is and who they represent. So, Dan, thank you so much for coming down today. And uh, it's Thanks very much, yours. Tim. <laughs> yep, uh, it's uh, great to be here. Um, Leading Age is an organization that uh, represents uh, providers of senior services located throughout New York State. Uh, we have over 500 members, uh, each of which is a not-for-profit or government-sponsored agency. Uh, our members provide everything from independent senior housing mm -hmm. through assisted living, home care services, uh, right up through uh, skilled nursing care in nursing homes. We also have members that uh, have retirement communities, and we represent what are called managed long-term care plans, which are plans that are aimed at uh, meeting the needs of, of elderly people. So uh, we obviously, as an organization, have a great deal of interest in, uh, in all the discussions in Washington right. because... As we all know, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security are a very large part of the federal budget, and uh, and many of our members and the people they serve rely on those programs to uh, receive the services uh, and to support healthy lifestyles uh, as people get older. Right. So whatever changes are enacted certainly impacts all of, of the members of Leading Age. Absolutely. Uh, to a, to a very very large extent. Right. So, anyway, well, why don't why don't we get uh, why don't we get started right away and let's 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 kick it off with what I was talking about today, and that's this uh, uh, fiscal cliff that uh, we've been hearing about uh, for the last few weeks, and now we're we're hearing about it even more. Uh, what does uh, the fiscal? Well, I, you know what? I explained it a little bit uh, during the live segment, but why don't you tell sure. us, Dan? Really, what what is the fiscal cliff, and and what what does it mean for seniors? And and I'm sure you can probably do a much better job than I just did. But go right ahead. Thanks, Tim. Well, the fiscal cliff sounds pretty ominous, and 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 it really is. Um, and where the where it kind of originated is uh, back in. August of 2011, uh, the Congress passed a, a law called the, um, uh, the, it was actually the Budget Control Act of 2011, and uh, as part of that law, there was a requirement that a super committee of members of Congress would come up with uh, $1.2 trillion, and that's trillion with a T, it's a big number, <laughs> it's a big number uh, right. of, of deficit reduction over a 10-year period. And uh, for folks that were reading the papers around that time, there was a great deal of controversy um, over what those cuts might be. And ultimately, the committee was not able to come to agreement mm -hmm. on what the, the $1.2 trillion in cuts should be. So that, that, uh, that piece of law actually had a fail-safe in it that said that if they couldn't come up with those cuts, there would be something called uh, sequestration, which is a fancy Washington term for saying that there would be all these automatic increases in, in tax rates, and in fact, uh, income taxes and estate taxes and some other taxes would return to the levels they were at before the Bush tax cuts. 
And the other thing that would happen is that there would be across the board uh, cuts in spending, both on the uh, defense side, which is right. uh, very political, as well as uh, in domestic programs, uh, which would include, for instance, the Medicare program. Right. And so all, all the entitlements, basically, the, uh, they were all on the chopping block. Well, right? this, yeah, at least at that point, uh, the Medicaid program, which is our uh, federal state program that helps uh, people who are lower income mm -hmm. with their health care needs, uh, was not part of the sequester or the automatic cuts. Uh, nonetheless, anytime you talk about the federal budget, Medicaid gets right. brought in because it's a, it's a very large program. True. And folks were really concerned because these automatic cuts and tax increases were supposed to take effect January 1st of this year. And we all know that the economy uh, is, you know, we, we are growing modestly now, but folks are very concerned that if uh, you were to increase taxes and cut all these programs, uh, we could uh, kind of go back into recession. Mm -hmm. and. People wanted to avoid that at all costs. So anyway, the culmination of all that was the fiscal cliff, and Congress and the President needed to do something before January 1st to avert that. Who Do we know who came up with that terminology, fiscal cliff? Uh, <laughs> actually, I think uh, you know? it, one of the people I heard credited with that was um, um, ben Bernanke, who's uh, chairman of the Federal Reserve, oh, really? and I think ben, he was making a presentation ben, at one point, uh, and he referred to, to it as a fiscal, fiscal cliff. cliff. So, mm -hmm. okay. and there have been all these analogies that we haven't really solved the cliff. We've bought ourselves a bungee right. cord. Yes. So, yes. <laughs> I because there, heard that one. there are heard, further. Uh, yes, I've heard kicking the can. Right. We're kicking the can down the road a little ways, but I haven't Absolutely. heard bungee cord. <laughs> that's, that's good. Uh, but anyway, it, as you just said, we we all know that uh, Congress and the President did agree on a short-term resolution. Right. And um, I guess uh, the uh, House uh, made uh, voted very late on the night of January 1st, January and then 1st. the President signed that legislation on January 2nd. Right. So um, that's that's what that's all about. But now, what would the automatic cuts have meant for seniors needing, uh, say, physician services? Sure. Uh, specifically. Well, and, uh, you know, physician services are a big part of ensuring proper care for people as they get older. Medicare Part B is actually the, uh, the program within Medicare that pays for physician services. And going all the way back to 1997, Congress and the President agreed on a law that set this formula for how much physician payments under Medicare are supposed mm -hmm. to go up each year. And after it worked good for the first few years, but then after that, there became there was a growing gap between <coughs> what the formula said and what the what the actual payments were at that point in time. And every year, Congress and the President had have, have agreed to you know a fix that will you know would kind of fix that gap. Well. Uh, the gap has grown to nearly 27 percent, so 26 and a half percent cut. So, if Congress and the President hadn't acted by January 1st, then physicians would have been facing a minimum 26 and a half percent cut in their Medicare reimbursement. Right. And there certainly was talk in the physician community, uh, you know, particularly with a cut that size, that uh, some doctors would just would not really be interested in serving Medicare mm -hmm. beneficiaries anymore. Um, and obviously, you know, having access to physician services is, is vitally important. So Absolutely. folks were very concerned about that, and that's why uh, in the deal that was struck, uh, the, the physician cut was was voided. And so that so was restored. Right? That, was that was restored, restored. for a one year period, and uh, there'll no no doubt there'll be a battle. You there'll know, be another battle in the future. Down right. the line, right? But it could have meant that uh, a lot of seniors might have found themselves without a physician, and having to scramble to to find uh, maybe one of the very few that might have stayed in the program. Well, so, it's very possible, and you uh, you know there we know there are undersupplies of certain kinds of physicians depending on what sure. area you're in. Geographically, uh, right? Exactly. General practitioners are hard to find some areas, and other areas it's very hard to find specialists. Mm -hmm. Most physicians do participate in Medicare, but again, if if a quarter of the Medicare payment was going to get taken away. Uh, some of the doctors may have rethought that, and uh, mm -hmm. that would have been an access issue for it certainly uh, would have seniors, right. no doubt. Right, and again, a concern down the road because uh, there, there's going to be a lot of debate, there and that, that one could very well come up again. Yep. Um, uh, could other automatic cuts have been made to Medicare other than the ones we just spoke about? Well, yes, there were uh, uh, there were a couple of other cuts as well. One had to do with uh, with outpatient therapy services. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well. Oftentimes, what will happen is if a senior has to go into the hospital, or, you know, let's say that they fractured a hip and they uh, have that repaired or have a hip replacement, and then 
the hospital will kind of take care of their short-term needs, but then they'll get discharged and maybe they need some uh, therapy delivered in the home or in an outpatient setting, um, you know, to be able to get back to full strength. Um, if the, you know, automatic cuts had happened and if uh, something wasn't, uh, wasn't done, um, there are these federal limits that are in law over how much therapy, outpatient therapy services people can get. Mm -hmm. And they apply to physical therapy, speech therapy, and occupational mm -hmm. therapy, which are three different types. Right. Um, and basically the limits are $1,900 a year for combined physical and speech therapy and another $1,900 for occupational therapy. And there's been a process in place for the last several years where if somebody needs more therapy than that for whatever reason, they could get an exception to that limit. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what would have happened if these automatic cuts had gone in is that those exceptions would have been gone. Have been so gone, right. some people who maybe had two health events in a year or had a more mm -hmm. extensive therapy need uh, would yeah. not have been able to get the, uh, the therapies that they needed, which really is, um, you know, it's penny wise and pound foolish because if you can restore somebody back to their full function, then they're going to be less dependent. And, Absolutely. You know, then they'll rely less on, on assistance in the future. So That's right. uh, we'd like, we really hate to see that benefit get cut. And again, the, the uh, that deal was that was reached right. uh, restored Preserve that for that a one year period. Right. For a one year for, period. For one year period. So uh, we're good to go for another year and we'll be back in the same place next year if we don't right. do right. something more That's permanent. Right. Wow. Hmm. Were other senior uh, programs facing uh, some of these automatic cuts that were supposed to take effect? Well, there, there, uh, there were certainly, yeah. And um, for instance, there is, uh, there's funding in the federal budget for uh, housing programs for low-income elderly. And most of those programs are through HUD, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Um, and much of the funding that's aimed at uh, providing affordable housing to seniors uh, would have been wiped away mm -hmm. in those automatic cuts. Uh, and, you know, obviously if people don't have affordable, safe places to live, then uh, it affects, you know, their lives mm -hmm. uh, tremendously. So uh, that was a big concern. There were also aging services programs that uh, would have been cut. And also uh, there is assistance that's provided by the federal government to local offices for the aging to help provide information and to help counsel older people on services that are available to them. Some of those programs uh, would have been cut as well. And then finally, uh, the Medicaid program, which again is the, uh, the uh, program for people that are low income. Uh, they, the Medicaid program provides subsidies to people to help them buy Medicare Part B coverage. Mm -hmm. Medicare Part B is again used to pay for physician services right. and therapies and you know other types of things. Some of those Medicaid subsidies would have gone away as well uh, mm -hmm. if uh, if these automatic cuts were allowed to happen. Right. So there were other Medicare cuts that were uh, and and also other types of cuts to senior uh, programs that would have been made right. uh, if we hadn't right. had this uh, this last minute deal. Right.